Hey guys, it's Brian from uh, Team Aquascape. Running around all over the place today and I thought I'd share with you guys kind of my day. I need to stop by the city of Rosemount, which was a project that we started late November. Um, I just remember it snowing and it getting kind of bad and Chris and the guys just finished up the landscaping so I really wanted to go out there, check that out. On the way there, I want you guys to see a pond that you've actually probably seen before. Captain Rick's got a crazy awesome pond, asked if we could bring him out a couple water lilies if we were ever in the area and we're gonna be in the area. Let's go find this tropical water lily, get on the road, get that dropped off, and then really what I'm most excited about is checking out that project for the city of Rosemont that we did at the park district. It was super cool in the winter. I can't imagine it's not a thousand times better with the plants all the way around. Luckily, we have an enormous amount of cool stuff to choose from. These are the hardy water lilies, which we have a huge variety as well. And the tropical water lilies are out here. How do I get that thing? in my car. <laughs> God, he would love that one, wouldn't he? Look at that thing. All right, let's get one that's easy. Let's see if we can talk to somebody inside. One of us, either you or me, was gonna have to go out there and get it, and I volunteered. Yeah. <laughs> I know you did too, but yeah. I'll go do it. The easiest way to tell a tropical lily from a hardy lily, notice the leaves here. So we've got a tropical lily sitting right next to a hardy lily right here. And if you look at the leaves, it's not so much the color of the leaf, it's the edges of the leaf. So notice how the edges of this leaf are serrated. They look jagged. Hardy water lilies are almost always smooth. Something we gotta be somewhat mindful of is I gotta travel about 30 miles out to Rick's house there with this. And I don't have a pond in the back of my truck. If I just take these pads, I've got a scrap piece of fabric back over there. I'm just gonna keep these moist with the wet piece of fabric. That fabric also protect them from the wind and we'll be in good shape by the time we get to Rick. Take this guy out of here. Oh my gosh, it's way heavier than you would have guessed. Check stop, Captain Rex. All right, we made it. Let's check out this lily. See how my, my wet fabric trick worked on preserving this giant water lily. Oh, that's kind of dry already. Oh, we look pretty good. Yep, no wind damage. Things are still moist, that's awesome. If we put a new water lily in there, the fish become very, very curious with it. And remember, koi are carp, and carp generally like to root around. So they see this sandy, loamy type material here and will instantly come in here and start devouring all this stuff. They're looking for food, but we don't want them to do that. So we're gonna take some gravel and I'm gonna cover this whole area with gravel and let this thing uh, get bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the rest of the year. So let's grab this guy and walk it over to the pond. How do I do that if I'm holding the camera? Oh my god, it's still heavy. So check out this pond. Pretty incredible. I just love it. It's got a combination of the urns. That urn is actually sitting on top of a wetland filter. Pond's looking really, really healthy. Fish are super active. And so when I'm placing the water lily, I want to think of a couple things. Where, depth-wise, will it do the best? They're gonna to want to sit in 18 inches to even up to like three, four feet, and they'll be healthy and look great. The last thing I want to think about is really circulation. So we've got our skimmer box sitting over here. We've got water pushing from this waterfall, this waterfall, this waterfall, and then this area here. The worst place for me to put the water lily would be right there because as that thing grows and the pads cover the surface of this water, it's gonna obstruct a lot of the debris from wanting to get sucked into the pond. So I see these jets pushing water here. There's a jet there pushing water this way. I kind of like the idea of that water lily sitting here. So as that water pushes across here, the lily as it matures will actually cause the water to kind of go around and then back over to the skimmer box. I 
I think it went all right. I am wet, but I'm wearing these cool pants. In about 15 minutes, less than, they'll be totally dry. I mean, you can see how wet they are now, but they dry off super, super fast. I love the location of Lily. I'll turn this around and show you again. The fish are already kind of swarming all the way around it, which is cool. As I see them trying to go down to the bottom, they can't get into that mud, which is exactly why we put that gravel over it. Another thing I want to show you about is the depth. So it's very common when you buy a lily, they're grown 10 inches of water, maybe even a foot of water. So notice here how the pads are considerably further underwater. This is normal. Give that lily 24 hours. These submerged lily pads will be floating up on the surface. The one thing you have to know when buying a tropical lily is they can get pretty big. I've seen tropical water lilies get 15 feet in diameter, which would cover a space from about there all the way out to here, which looks super impressive, especially with some underwater lights on it. Just know that they're not for every pond or how much space it's gonna take in your pond. Keeping relationships like this is so important to our business. You know, Rick uh, has been a great customer of ours and we've redone his pond three times, but maintaining those relationships is important because you never know where your next project is gonna come from. So much of our business is from word of mouth not from Facebook, not from home shows. And so the next project I'm gonna take you to, a project that was actually given to us by uh, Rick himself. He uh, does some stuff here in the city and spoke highly of us to the right people and they gave us a shot and let us build a really, really cool project, which I can't wait to show you guys next. It's awesome. So this is always a lot of fun for me to come back and see past projects. Chris and the rest of the team came out here, did a bunch of landscaping around it, and the landscaping is really what makes or breaks every project to me. You can build the best looking project in the world and fail with the landscape and the whole thing fails. At the same time, you can build a so-so looking project and completely save it with the plant. So I can't wait to see what Chris came up with. He's super creative and knows plants probably a whole lot better than I do, so. Oh, cool. I already see a Japanese maple. Nice, giving some height, a little bit of color. Oh, this is awesome. I just love this thing. Look at how awesome this is. Look at this, a sedum tile. It comes in um, strips, almost like sod wood, and it instantly covers an enormous amount of space. This was a super smart decision because the amount of people that are gonna come up to the edge of this is gonna be overwhelming. And so you want something that can actually handle a little bit of foot traffic and keep gravel and mulch and everything else from wanting to wash into the feature. So this was an awesome choice. I see some hydrangeas back there as they continue to grow and grow and grow how they're actually going to come and kind of hang over the bowl obviously these little annuals the marigolds and some of the other stuff is a nice pop of color and those will only look better over time throughout the rest of the summer see a little dwarf mugo pine over there this is something we did with the bowls we were a little concerned about liabilities so we filled these bowls completely up with cobbles making it impossible for a child to really get hurt in there notice too we put in some pretty big boulders in the front keeping the smaller gravel back there i didn't want small gravel here because I'd be worried about every little kid coming and throwing stuff. Just awesome. Now this plant here is something we didn't put in, but something very common with the characteristics of weathered limestone. Weathered limestone, where it comes out of in Missouri, sits in the woods, and all the time we see trees, growing up out of the rocks, old plants. They want to keep it from my understanding. Oh, look at this. The moss is actually starting to grow and take off. This is moss that we put in last year. That one's growing really, really well. The ferns were a suggestion, helps hide all the mechanics sitting back here. And so every year they can just buy a couple more ferns, keep them right in their pots and help hide that space. We got some allium back there, juniper, I love the Japanese maple. It's gonna love life right here. Really to have a little bit of height, helping scale things down and then hide the corner and uh, the foundation of the building a little bit. So I think what I love about the project really more than anything is first that the customers trusted in us and with a vision. And that vision is really kind of obscured a little, like, hey, we wanna bring out some different bowls. We have a new product with these stacked slate walls. Look at this bowl here, how it spills not once, not twice, but three times. Here it drops one into this bowl which then feeds this one this one comes all the way down both of that water together gives the flow coming out of there 
and then here we get this big tall sheet coming out of them. So these are just our patio bowls that have been manipulated in a way to get water to come up out of them. We just drill out the bottom of the bowl, have a bulkhead fitting, and then plumb it. So the only bowl that's actually plumbed out of the three of these is this one right here. And then that goes down into our reservoir. So this whole thing is just a big thing of aqua blocks here. The stack slate walls, I think we're scratching the surface on the potential of these guys. You're gonna start seeing us use them quite a bit throughout this year. Here we are with the bowls again. And then of course, we still wanted to do a natural waterfall. The other thing I really like about the project is talk about maximizing a space. You have less than seven feet from this edge to this edge over here, and it's about 25, 30 feet long. So what else could you do in such a small space to create such a huge impact? And at night, you should see what this thing looks like. Well, hey guys, went out to Rick's house, got to see a cool project at that water that we put in there, and because of him, we got to do this awesome project back here. Hey, I hope you guys like this. Tell me what you liked about that or what you didn't like. I'd love to hear that feedback as well. What would you guys like to see us build maybe sometime in the near future? Till next time, bye.